Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the ninth annual MSU Science Festival. Um, we are kicking off our first expo day of the, of, of the, the festival. Um, my name is Catherine Hagman. I'm going to be your host today. Um, I'm joined by Natalie Seifer and Katie Oshesky from the Michigan DNR. Um, before we get started, just a couple notes. We encourage you to ask questions. Um, so if you're joining us on the Zoom webinar, there's a Q&A function at the bottom of your screen that you can use to ask questions. If you're joining us on Facebook, I'm monitoring the questions, uh, excuse me, the comments section. So go ahead and uh, ask any of your questions there. And we'll make sure that we answer those at the end of the presentation. Um, and so with that, Natalie, I'm gonna hand it off to you and go ahead and get started. All right, great. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so my name is Natalie and I'm an educator at the Michigan DNR Outdoor Adventure Center located in Detroit. And so today I am going to be talking to you guys about um, an absolutely fascinating and unique fish that does live here in the Great Lakes and actually specifically here in the Detroit River. Um, so the title of my presentation today is called Meet the Great Lakes Living Fossil. Okay, so I don't know if maybe some of you know what fish is sometimes called the living fossil or sometimes the living dinosaur or giant of the Detroit River. <laughs> it is the lake sturgeon. So this is the fish that we're gonna be focusing on today. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about what makes this fish so unique from other fish species. And then also I wanna introduce um, a lake sturgeon restoration project basically that has been happening here in the Detroit River and uh, St. Clair River. Um, just to give you a brief little bit of background, uh, we're gonna talk about why lake sturgeon numbers had gone so low in the Detroit River and then what's being done to um, bring them back. And um, before we end, we will give you an opportunity to uh, view our live lake sturgeon that we have living here in the classroom at the Outdoor Adventure Center. All right, so let's talk a little bit about lake sturgeon. That is one right there, by the way. Very strange looking fish. <laughs> one of the reasons that um, lake sturgeon are called the living fossil is because the sturgeon family of fish has actually been on the planet since the time of the dinosaurs. So all the way back to the Cretaceous period. So way back in time in the geologic uh, record and fossil record um, at the time where there were things like um, dinosaurs. Um, and uh, I think that that little uh, snail looking thing is an ammonite. Um, so way back then, the sturgeon family of fish um, existed. And ever since then, they haven't really changed a whole lot. So their features have been really successful on the planet for millions and millions of years, which is pretty neat. Um, so I'm going to show on the next slide here just a short little video recording of our sturgeon. So these are a couple of, um, or these are our two fish that live here in the aquarium. Um, but I wanted to just show a video of them swimming around so you could get an idea of their behavior. So these ones, by the way, are tiny. Um, they are only about a couple of years old, maybe a few years old. Um, and lake sturgeon can get to be about six and a half to seven feet long once they're full grown. So as you can see, these ones are quite small still. Um, but one thing to notice is their behavior, what they're doing um, at the bottom um, by the rocks there. You can kind of see little like barbels that they have under their, under their snout. That's what they use to feel. And there's their mouth, it's like a suction cup. And they're constantly feeling the bottom um, and tasting for food. So they're a bottom feeding fish that eats things like insects, um, snails, maybe some tiny fish that might be there. So even though they get really large, they are not really a predatory fish. Um, they're like a bottom feeding, um, you know, feeding on insects, crustaceans, stuff like that. 
Um, another thing about them to look at is, do they have scales? And you might notice that they really don't have scales. <laughs> um, they have some pointy things along their back and along their side called scoots. Oops, I'm gonna stop the video there. <laughs> um, called scoots and um, they are scale-like things, but they actually do not have scales. The scoots are actual, those are a couple of scoots there. Um, from a lake sturgeon. So those are things that are sort of like scales, but they're a little bit different because back then fish did not have scales at the time where there were dinosaurs. So that's a little bit about the biology of a lake sturgeon. And I just wanna show you for a minute, a little bit about their life cycle. So um, here uh, we would start with maybe the adult fish, okay? And they can live to be 150 years old, okay? Um, and they lay eggs in rocks at the bottom of a river. Um, once the eggs hatch, um, they just kind of float downstream to a marsh or nursery habitat, we might call it. Um, and at that time, they're still very small. Um, they're eating aquatic insects though. Um, and then by the time that they're like between 15 and 25 years old, they might start spawning and and mating um, themselves, but it takes a long time, right? So 15 to 25 years before they start laying eggs. So they have to get quite old before they start doing that, you know, in terms of fish. Um, so then um, getting back to uh, this part of the life cycle here, um, they would only also spawn every two to seven years. So they're unique because they get pretty old before they start spawning and they don't even do it every year. So some, a lot of times when you have um, a species that doesn't reproduce often, um, they could be more vulnerable to um, damaging or damages to their population because they're not reproducing as often. So a little bit of history then about um, the lake sturgeon in the Detroit River and the Great Lakes. Historically, back in like the 1800s, um, they were actually considered a nuisance species. Um, they got so big, you can see this, this huge lake sturgeon here that these folks caught. They got so big that they would tangle up fishing nets and things like that. They were considered a nuisance and they were just kind of pulled out of the rivers and lakes and then just, just left, left to die and left to rot. Um, and then eventually though, it was discovered that they were good for caviar and meat. So then they were overfished. So between being pulled out as a pest species and then being overfished, their numbers ended up going way down in the Great Lakes and in the Detroit River. Also, um, what you're seeing right here is the dredging of a shipping channel. Um, dredging of shipping channels is actually um, very damaging to their spawning habitat. So remember we saw in that diagram that they spawn at the bottom of the river, they lay eggs at the bottom of the river and rocks. That was all dug and dredged up for shipping channels in the river. So between all of those things, lake sturgeon numbers went way, way, way down to only like 1% of what they used to be. So biologists recently in the last couple of decades um, realized that they could restore some of that habitat though. Um, so in the St. Clair River and in the Detroit River, um, they found that some of those places would be good to create new spawning reefs for the sturgeon, like the one that you see right here. It's basically a spawning reef is a place for them to lay their eggs. And this is kind of the conditions that they like. So they look for locations in the De uh, Detroit and St. Clair Rivers that meet these, um, these um, factors here. Okay, so 25 to 50 feet deep, fast flow, and no plants at the bottom. Okay. And um, biologists have actually been building those reefs again, rebuilding those spawning reefs. Uh, so they work together with engineers and other folks. And what you're seeing here is a barge with a limestone rock that was actually used to build new spawning reefs in certain locations. Um, and I actually have a 
chunk of limestone here that is an example of what um, would have been used to build these reefs, okay? So pretty big chunk of limestone, very heavy. <laughs> and to show you kind of what would happen there, um, I mean, they placed these rocks in very precise locations. They really didn't just like dump it randomly. You know, they knew exactly where it was being dumped and was put in pretty precise locations. But this is just a diagram that shows kind of what would go on down there. So see, here would be a bunch of limestone rock about 120 feet long, okay, is what it says for the length of this reef. And then one and a half feet wide here, two and a half feet wide here, okay, and it's about 30 feet deep. The river's flowing in this direction here. So Lake sturgeon, of course, have been found using these reefs, and that's what they're mainly created for. But one of the cool things, too, is that other fish native to the Detroit River and uh, St. Clair River use these reefs as well. So fish like smallmouth bass use these reefs, and I believe largemouth bass have been found using them as well. And a really important one that also use these, uses these reefs is walleye. Um, and actually currently, as I'm speaking, there's hundreds of walleye fishing boats in the Detroit River right now, because right now is walleye fishing season. Um, so some of these other species that people fish for are also benefiting from these um, sturgeon spawning reefs. Okay, so I'm going to show um, just a short uh, video here in a second of uh, some DNR biologists doing some uh, sturgeon fish sampling work. Um, I think they're on the St. Clair River, but I want to show a couple of tools that they're using with my document camera here um, before I show the video so that you kind of know what they're talking about. So, okay. So one thing that you might hear them say is set line, and a set line is a rope, basically, okay, with some hooks on it. So here is a hook, okay, and here's the rope, all right, and so that's what they use to actually bait the fish, and they put bait on the end of those hooks, bait the sturgeon, I should say. Um, one of the other things that you will hear them refer to, oops, sorry, I just lost my, my Foy tag. Oh, I dropped it, okay. <laughs> you might hear them say Floy tag. This is an external tag that goes on the um, outside of the fish. And then they also will refer to a pit tag, which is just this tiny little thing right there that they put on the inside of the fish. Now I'm just showing you these things right now so that you know what they're referring to because the video goes pretty fast. And also one more thing is, this is um, what you might see them holding over the sturgeon. And this is um, going to read information from a pit tag that they put on the inside of the fish. Okay, so let's see these things in a video. Welcome aboard the RV Channel Cat as we embark on our annual sturgeon set line survey in the north channel of the St. Clair River. The lake sturgeon is the largest and longest lived Great Lakes fish species. They can live over 100 years and exceed 100 pounds. The population present in the St. Clair Detroit River system is the largest in the Great Lakes and supports an increasingly popular recreational fishery. Our job is to monitor lake sturgeon populations, ensure their continued recovery, while learning more about their basic ecology. We sample lake sturgeon using set lines lifted by hand. Each lift is exciting because you never know what you will catch. Once on board, each fish is weighed, measured for total length, and given a thorough examination. Large fish are given an external tag for anglers to report. 
and all fish receive a pit tag so that recaptures can be easily identified. Teamwork ensures that fish are processed quickly, safely, and that all data collected is accurate. Finally, the fish is returned to the water and swims off until hopefully we see it again a few years down the road. Thank you for joining our team on board the RV Channel Cat. Together with our many partners, we're working to provide the science needed for the sound management of this iconic Great Lakes species. We hope to see you on the water. All right, so that short video just kind of gives an idea of um, what it's like to sample for um, fish like the lake sturgeon. And so they do that at the reef locations um, to um, try and get an idea of how many sturgeon are using these reefs that they've built for them. And, you know, sometimes they also um, will catch some of those other fish species that are referred to as well. So that's how they know that other fish species are using them too. Um, so what you're seeing here in this, in this last uh, image here is a bunch of middle school students that came to Millican State Park here a few years ago for our annual Sturgeon Day, um, where some of our awesome biologists would share um, the work that they do and also uh, bring up a very large live sturgeon that you can see there. Um, so um, our biologist of course, uh, study the fish and uh, restore the habitat, but they also like to involve students and the public and share the work that they do. So that's um, a fun part of, of that job. So the very last thing here, we do want to um, show you our live lake sturgeon that we have here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, I think, and I want, I want everybody to see the document camera view. So wait, should I stop stop screen share or? Is it, yeah, it would make it bigger. It would make it bigger. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Stop share and then. Yeah, okay. All right, so meet our live sturgeon. <laughs> um, so he's about 18 inches long. Oops. Let me kind of zoom in this way a little bit. And here you can see, oh, just, <laughs> maybe that's not going to work so well. I don't know. We got just a couple minutes here, but you can kind of see, um, the barbels there and oh there's the suction cup mouth oh i don't know <laughs> we'll put him back in all right so i think what we'll do is we'll allow for pictures i mean not pictures um questions and then um let's see maybe we can still kind of show our sturgeon there a little bit though so what kinds of questions do we have all right. Um, so cool. Surgeon are so cool. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, it's great to see one here right now. Um, just as a reminder to everyone tuning in, if you're joining us on Zoom, um, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to ask any questions that you have. If you're joining us on the Facebook live stream, um, go ahead and type your questions right in the comment section. I'll be sure to read through them. Um, Armin wants to know, um, this sturgeon right here, how, how old is he? Probably a few years old. I think maybe like three or four years old. Yeah, they came to us when they were about a foot long and they've probably grown a good three or four inches in the last year or so. So this is a juvenile sturgeon that still has many years to go before it's big enough and old enough to spawn and lay eggs if it's female. Um, Cecilia and Jonathan, hello, thanks for tuning in. Um, they are big sturgeon fans. They're on the Detroit River right now. Um, Cecilia would like to know how big can sturgeon get? They can get about six and a half feet long and up to like, gosh, 250 pounds, maybe 150, 250. Wow, that's, that's wild. <laughs> um, K 
Kayla, um, excuse me, Caleb wants to know, um, he said this may have been discussed, but are sturgeon protected species? They are, yeah, they are currently um, a threatened species in the state of Michigan. Um, you can fish for sturgeon at a very limited times, um, but most of the time, um, if you do catch a sturgeon, you do have to release them. Um, Chris wants to know, um, what do you feed the sturgeon? We feed our sturgeon actually frozen blood worms. So <laughs> they get thawed in some water and uh, the, we drop the blood worms in and they suck them up from the bottom. Um, but in the wild, they eat things like um, crustaceans, maybe tiny fish and insects that would be at the bottom. Oh, cool. Um, well, we are running out of time already, um, but we can take a couple more questions. So feel free to um, ask them in the Q&A section. Um, Madeline and AJ want to know, do the shoots grow? The, the scoots? Yep. Yes, so they would grow with the fish, um, but they do kind of like shed them as well, I think. Um, yeah, that's a good question. But, but I mean, just like, yeah, just, just like our, our other, like our body, body parts grow with us, the, the scoots grow with the fish too. And as the fish um, gets larger, the scoots actually become smoother and they don't have the spikes on them anymore really because they don't need that protection anymore. When they're six and a half feet long, there's nothing that's going to eat them. So their scoots don't need to protect them from predators. Mm -hmm. um I have a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. If anyone tuning in wants to learn more or check out your work at the DNR, where can they go to learn more? Um, they can go to a few different places. So if you want to learn more about the Outdoor Adventure Center, go to michigan.gov slash OAC. Um, you can also just visit the DNR website, which is michigan.gov slash DNR. Um, and there you can search fishing, fisheries, um, anything like that. And you'll be able to find information about like surgeon and other fish. Fantastic. Um, well, thank you again, Natalie. Thanks for joining us. And thanks for everyone tuning in. Um, we have plenty more events going on today, at the MSU Science Festival Expo Zone, and then throughout the entire month of April. So be sure to check out our website to learn more um, at sciencefestival.msu.edu. Thanks so much. Great. Thanks. Take care. Yep. You too. Thank you.